You touched a lot of different technologies, AI, you mentioned some of them, semiconductors, blockchain. What, what are you quantum? What are you most excited about right now? So I always go by what is today and what's around the corner. So today, I think the opportunity for all our clients to leverage both hybrid cloud and artificial intelligence to improve their businesses, take costs out is incredible. I think on cloud, people kind of see it. I think we don't have to convince people anymore. I think on AI, they have yet to see the full benefit. I think we're like, to use a baseball analogy, we maybe in the first or second innings of artificial intelligence. Then I think sustainability is as much about getting efficiency and cost as it is about the purpose of being good to the environment. And then there is quantum, which I think is going to be bigger than cloud, but probably a decade from now. And that's a big prediction to say it's going to be that big. Cloud is hundreds of billions in revenue today, right? 16 years, maybe in the making, to end 2006, I'll say it was year one for cloud. Why do I say that? Because some of the big hyperscalers, that's when they began to come out. So 16 years in, we are a few hundred billion. I think a decade from now, quantum could be that big. But if I think about artificial intelligence, two and a half quintillion bytes of data per day. So that's 21 zeros per day. There is no way you're going to be able to digest that data without some technology. I think the only technology we know to harness data at that scale is artificial intelligence. And I'll sort of mention four use cases that I think every business should take advantage of. One, at the height of uh, the vaccine coming out, one of our clients, CVS, said, we're going to apply vaccines. We think we'll get 60 million phone calls of people saying, hey, I have this medical condition. This is my insurance. Can I schedule an appointment? Not too complicated, but not too simple. Do you want to hire 10,000 people into a call center for six months? Or do you, how do you train them? How do you keep them? Or can you begin to use artificial intelligence to address that? I think we had 80% of it we could handle with AI. So I think that whole area of, of interaction with people, I call them the simple use cases, is an obvious one. I think next is going to be around applying AI for information technology itself. We have uh, millions of people globally who are just watching the systems, monitoring the systems, making sure they're all up and running. I think there's a massive use of AI to IT itself. And that is the next wave that is uh, happening. And the third one I'll mention is about knowledge extraction. So when you think about reading through hundreds of thousands of pages for discovery, for due diligence, so we work with both EY and Deloitte, and they use AI like crazy now to really speed up the due diligence process. So if you think about this, how many things can we think of across where you can begin to automate, I'll call it routine work, process work, and this is all in front of us. This is all going to play out. And that's why I'm so excited about what AI can do. Which industry gets it? Which, who's doing the best job? I think the tech industry probably gets it. I mean, you can look at some of the consumer companies and I'll say they're probably well into the fifth or sixth innings, the B2C tech industries, because that's how they get scale. That's how they get the margins. Now you can say next is probably financial is getting it. I think that they, I see little hesitation in wanting to go there. Now they have some issues around regulatory burdens, proving that the AI is correct, proving that there is no bias because they get uh, called to the mat on all those issues. But I see a lot of uh, attention there on this topic. I was at the RBC Tech Conference yesterday, and Dave McKay was talking about their AI trading algorithm, which he's very proud of, which he thinks is doing as well as some of the people who do trading. Maybe not in all cases, but definitely in some cases. Well, in some of your use cases, it did make me wonder what the implications are going to be for the job market, if you're replacing 10,000 people picking up phones at CVS with AI. But we have full employment. Right so, now. But you said we're only in what inning? In the first or second innings right. of AI. But I go back to, let's take agriculture. 1,950% of the people in this country worked on agriculture. Today, it's less than 3%. I don't think 47% are going away. You create others. So when you're in a replacement ratio that is below one for the bulk of the world, certainly North America, certainly uh, China, 
Western Europe. I mean, the replacement ratio, by the way, women for children, I think average is now hitting 2.0 here. 2.1, I think. 2.1. So 2.1 would be flat. By the way, there, if you distinguish between women who were born in the U.S. versus women who were born outside, but I hear, I think the difference is 1.9 to 2.3 or something like that. Yeah. So you're having replacement ratios that are below one in a lot of the world. So we're actually going to have fewer people. So if you don't do this, our quality of life will actually go down, not, not up. So actually, I believe that there's so many jobs, whether it's in cyber, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in um, education, that need to get filled, that I actually am an, I'm an optimist on that front. That's good. That's, I haven't heard the this. nature of the jobs is going to change. I, I will acknowledge that.